Hey, good morning, everyone. Happy weekend to you. Josh is severe weather. I'm a meteorologist in the Raleigh area, and we're going to talk about what's going on in the tropics and another potential threat coming down the pipe here for next weekend uh, across the Lesser Antilles and something we want to keep an eye on here in the eastern United States as well. So I'm going to share my screen with you and I apologize for the chroma key makes my shirt kind of disappear, but uh, whatever. I'm not a fashion expert by any stretch here, but we do have another wave that has emerged off of Africa that models are all developing into a significant long track system, which will likely be a hurricane, maybe even a major hurricane here, and potentially could be impacting the Lesser Antilles here by next weekend. So we've got a lot of time to keep an eye on it, uh, but I'm one of those people that I, if I see a potential threat, I'm gonna at least explore it and discuss what could happen with you guys, because I think it's important in when it comes to preparing for the future here. We don't really wanna wait until less than three days when we know exactly where some, something's gonna be before we start acting on it, in my opinion, as a professional. So we're gonna talk about this system here and what we're looking at. The next name on the list, by the way, and I'm gonna talk about our new tropical storm, Katia, uh, is Lee, and I believe this one would get the name Lee, and there are signs that behind Lee there could be another hurricane as well, way down the road, that would be Margo, and then Nigel's the name after that. Here's a look at Zoom Earth, you can see how busy it's been over the last week, now it's not super busy right now, but uh, a lot going on here in the central Atlantic from Bermuda on north and east, and a lot going on in the east Atlantic, but the good news for us in the United States is there's not a lot going on here on the East Coast or in the Gulf of Mexico for the time being. So uh, good news there in the Pacific. Pretty quiet for now. We've got another area we're going to watch here off of the Guatemalan coastline. And then in the Western Pacific, things are about as busy as they have been in the Atlantic. But unfortunately, we are seeing land impacts across China, across Taiwan, maybe across Japan here over the next week or so. Here's a look at the uh, tropical outlook from the folks in Miami, and they've got a lot on their plate right now. But the good news is that uh, Franklin is no longer tropical, and Franklin ate up Jose uh, for dessert last night. So really nothing in the North Atlantic to worry about. Idalia, on the other hand, um, has started to show some signs of becoming tropi tropical again around Bermuda and some impact to Bermuda. After that, though, I think we are going to be in better shape with Idalia. And GERT, which formed two weeks ago almost, um, dissipated almost, but came back to life. A zombie storm here became a tropical storm again yesterday and has distanced herself from Idalia enough where she could kind of hold her own, we think, over the next few days. We had a new wave come off of Africa a few days ago that is moving northwest. That is now tropical storm Katia. But the one system that I think has the greatest potential to be an impact storm is one that has recently just left the African coast and models show a high chance of development towards the middle part of next week into our next tropical storm, which would be Lee. Um, and that is something I think you need to keep an eye on here in the Lesser Antilles and beyond. Here's a look at the wide view satellite. You can see uh, quite a bit going on right now across the central Atlantic. I'm gonna just highlight some systems for you. This is Idalia. It's attached to a cold front, so a little bit still extra tropical but you can see convection flaring back up here. Waters are pretty warm in this area. So I do think Idalia is again gonna be a tropical storm this morning or by this afternoon. And then that system is gonna be tracking off to the north and then maybe turning back towards Atlantic Canada. Um, it does not look like it's gonna come full circle back to the East Coast because not even Idalia can afford to live in the Northeast. I know I'm joking about that, but, but in all reality, yes, uh, not looking like a threat to the United States anymore, thank goodness. Um, we do have the, the extra tropical portion of Franklin still out there, passing by south and east of Newfoundland. That is not a threat to land at this point, just heading into the high latitudes. And we did have Tropical Storm Jose in here, but that has gotten eaten up by Franklin. Uh, so we no longer even have a circulation with Jose. In the East Atlantic, we now have Tropical Storm Katia, and then our wave that we're going to keep an eye on here. Uh, but things are very quiet in the Caribbean, very quiet here in the Central Atlantic for the time being. And in the Gulf of Mexico, we do have this wave moving through uh, the Bay of Campeche and Guatemala. Uh, does not look like it's gonna develop in the Gulf, but it looks like it could develop in a few days uh, off the Mexican coastline. So that is what I'm watching for you all here in the tropics, a very busy beginning of September. Not that you could really expect anything else from a record warm body of water. Yes, we're getting ready for football here. Uh, any of you guys going to see any college football games today? Uh, should be a very nice day in the Eastern United States. 
but pretty muggy down in Florida and the Gulf Coast. We are getting some needed rain as an upper level low spins back here across the central Gulf states. And um, I will show that to you here real quick. You can kind of see this spin right in here over Mississippi and Louisiana. That's drawing an old boundary kind of this direction here. So going to be pretty wet here on the central Gulf Coast states today and pretty wet across South Florida and the Bahamas, uh, but a lot of wind shear in this area. Huge area of high pressure building east here this weekend. So as nice as it is this morning in the eastern United States, we are going to see a return to much warmer temperatures as we get through this holiday weekend. And Labor Day Monday is going to be a great day for the beach out here on the Mid-Atlantic and Northeast Coast. Just some pretty soupy temperatures returning here. Not super humid, but certainly well above average temperature wise, as it looks like the month of September is going to be another probably close to, if not record, warm month of September. Um, so just uh, looking at some incredible warmth continuing. Uh, especially in the plains, but even in the Midwest and parts of the East. But in the Eastern US, we are gonna see phases where it does cool back down and kind of go back and forth, kind of a roller coaster. So we'll get some false fall like we're dealing with now, but we will again see some heat waves. Now, looking at the tropics, this is Bermuda here. We do have a cold front kind of right in here. So right now, uh, Idalia is still kind of latched on to that front. Um, you kind of see here's the warm front, here's the cold front in here. Uh, but it looks like it's going to break away enough. We are now, see now seeing some convection flaring right back up over these warmer ocean waters. And as it pulls away from Bermuda, it will probably be a tropical storm in here again for about a day or two. And then extra tropical as it moves up towards Sable Island and perhaps towards Nova Scotia and then back out to sea after that. Here's Gert and Gert is getting sheared from Idalia. There's some strong wind shear here over the north, but there's enough uh, convection at this point to maintain tropical storm intensity. And after Idalia pulls away, um, wind shear should lessen in here, and Gert could still try to find a way to survive here. This is the little storm that could um, over the next few days, but it is not going to be a problem for any land masses at this point. So that's the good news there. A look at the infrared, and you can see uh, we are seeing this flare up just east of Bermuda. Tropical storm conditions continuing on the island of Bermuda, uh, but all the nasty rain remains just to the east. And then here's Gert which is about 500 miles southeast of Idalia, and they are close, but not close enough to uh, really wipe each other out, if that makes sense. Um, you can see some wind shear here, but still a pretty well-defined area of cold thunderstorms with Idalia. This one is not going to rapidly intensify again like it did in the eastern Gulf, uh, but it is going to be close enough to Bermuda to cause some issues. Right now, radar from Bermuda shows all the nasty rain is just off the island. That is some good news. Um, we need a break in Bermuda. You've had two storms this week, uh, but the winds continue to remain strong. Winds have gusted to 50 miles per hour across the um, airport here this morning and on other elevated stations. We've had wind gusts in the 50 mile per hour range. Fortunately, not stronger than that, um, but obviously not a great day to take the boat out here north and east of Bermuda. Very rough conditions here. And we are going to see a track to the east northeast with some slowing today and then a turn towards the north and a bend back towards the north and west as an extra tropical system later this week. The western part of this envelope still is aimed at Nova Scotia, not really um, aimed at the Bay of Fundy at this point or Maine. Um, a few days ago, um, this system was expected to be a little slower. It has managed to jump out faster than what most of the malls have shown for day after day. And a very difficult end game to forecast here, but we are seeing more consistency now that this system is going to be far enough east to not curl back towards the eastern U.S. It may curl back towards Atlantic Canada, but you will see a weakening trend and a loss of tropical characteristics. So for those of you uh, that are maybe on Cape Sable or in Newfoundland, I don't think this is really that big a deal for you later next week, but you will get some rain and some wind. Uh, nothing unusual for you in this part of the world. And you can see models are mostly agreeing that it's going to go far enough east so that it can't really bend too far back to the west. Um, there is certainly still a bit of support for something towards Nova Scotia, but a greater chance this turns back away to the right and goes maybe across Newfoundland here towards next Saturday. And the intensity forecast, everything is below tropical storm strength by the time we get past the middle of this week. So I love these trends with Idalia. I will say a few days ago, these trends were not here. And the reason that I guess meteorologists continue to get paid is that we continue to run into uncertain future. So that's all I'm really going to talk about with Idalia. We will take a look here at Tropical Storm Gert. Um, not a threat to land, so I'm not going to spend a lot of time on it. But 
Very bottom heavy, very light on top here due to the northerly wind shear from Idalia. And you can see it is going to remain a tropical storm this weekend and track more off to the north. I am seeing some potential future beyond that, but a lot of uncertainty at that point. And then let's look at the African coastline where things are getting a lot busier here across Western Africa. And sorry for this flicker here, um, but this is here over here is tropical storm Kadi. I'll get to that in a second, but here's the wave we're watching. Uh, pretty well defined, but not enough of a low level circulation for this to develop anytime this weekend. I do think when it gets farther west, after it gets past the shadow of Katia, it does have a chance to become Tropical Storm Lee. Behind that, we've got another vigorous wave that models do develop into a named system. This is probably going to be Margo. Um, I say probably. I think there's a decent chance. I, I'm, it's not a guarantee. Nothing is at this time of the year. But um, decent chance this is going to move out and follow Lee and um, maybe something that could potentially be our next red area next weekend. We've got some time on that one. So we're going to keep an eye on that. Here is the infrared. Um, the reason I showed you that one is this one runs into resolution issues across Africa. But um, you can see here, let me uh, get my pen back out. Sorry about that. <clears throat> Need more coffee. Uh, but this is now Tropical Storm Katia here. And oh, by the way, Katia is the replacement name for Katrina, which was retired in 2005. We've had Katia in 2011, Katia in 2017, or yeah, 2017 and now 2023, but not a golf system. It is one that's con continuing off to the north and west. Here's an upper level low right here, uh, providing some space between Katia and uh, Gert. And this will back off to the west, this upper level feature here. And it is going to try to draw Katia northwest, but eventually there will end up being a recurve off to the north and west. We'll have to see about the future of Katia, but uh, wind shear from Franklin and from Idalia and from Gert are all going to be detrimental to the future of Katia. Here's our next wave. Here's the Cape Verde Islands here. This is the Senegal coastline here. And the wave is now passing by just south of the Cape Verde. Some rough weather here in the Cabo Verdes today. Uh, but you will see this track continue off to the west. And the latitude of it is going to be important. It probably will stay west here because as this upper low pulls away, a region of high pressure is going to build back in behind it and draw the system on more of a westerly track. There may be some latitude gain um, as we get later into the week, and that's what I'll be watching for you guys, how that gain looks, because the higher it goes up, the faster it develops, the less likely it's going to be a threat to the islands or the United States. The longer it takes to form, the less latitude gain we see, um, then the more likely we need to keep an eye on things across the Lesser Antilles and Puerto Rico, and obviously farther along from there. Here's Katia, um, nice looking little tropical storm, but not gonna really do too great here. There is now a trend back towards the West in the future of this system, but it is not gonna be something to be super concerned with. You'll see it is likely to weaken back to tropical depression strength here on Sunday and remain down in that region through the majority of the week. Uh, very slim chance it may try to hold together here next weekend. I'm gonna show you that in a little bit. Uh, but let's talk about the next system um, because Katia is not a threat. So here's a look at the amount of available moisture as this system tracks into the central Atlantic here next week. And you will see there's not a ton of dry air in the way of it, actually a pretty good moisture envelope. This is favorable to see a system develop. Um, you can see just a pretty good amount of greens here. That's precipitable water. That's moisture in the atmosphere. And really, the only dry areas are um, the southeast and the eastern and central Caribbean. We've got a good amount of moisture available here that would help fuel a system to develop. And it looks like it's going to stay that way here through the end of the week. Pretty good amount of moisture in place here. Um, another thing that's favorable for the system to develop is the upper level pattern here. This is a look at 200 millibars. So we're talking 40 to 50,000 feet aloft. And we see as this system moves westward, it's got a lot of spots where it can grow and ventilate here in the upper atmosphere. Uh, a good spot for it to continue to ventilate because all the wind shear is up here in the Western and Northern Atlantic. And then the easterly wind shear over the Eastern Atlantic separating what should be Lee at this point from what could be Margo after that. And you can see just a very good upper level pattern here, outflow in all the channels here. Wind shear pretty light at this point next weekend. So, uh, we could have a pretty healthy storm. Let's take a look at the future of this storm and some possibilities. And you can see here, I'm going to stop things. 
Uh, we will probably, this is going to be Tuesday night, Wednesday morning. We'll probably see at least an invest, if not a depression at this point here by next Wednesday morning. Uh, you can see here's the future of um, <clears throat> Katia. Here is Gert, which is probably falling apart. Here is Idalia, which may be at its strongest here, well north and east of Bermuda, and then weakening after that. Here's Franklin heading away and trying to hang out here around the Azores. But here's a look uh, as we get beyond into Wednesday night and Thursday. And you can see Idalia is much weaker at this point and beginning to turn right away from or parallel to Nova Scotia. Uh, you can see not much left here of Katia. You can see a strengthening system here, which will probably be a tropical storm next Thursday. Slight chance it could even make it to hurricane strength, and I'll zoom in to show you that. And then our next wave already tracking northwest, but developing, uh, kind of following in the footsteps of Katia here. And this one probably could be Margo. I say probably, I don't say it's a greater than 50 or 60% chance, but there's a chance that it will be Margo at that point. So yet another storm on the map here. And then here's a look at next weekend. And this takes us to next Saturday morning, a week from today. And we see several solutions close to the islands, several off to the north and east but we're starting to see a bend more to the west northwest and that bend I'll be watching for you guys very closely. Um, here's a closer look at what's going to happen here and as we move things along here, this is uh, next Thursday night next Friday some solutions already showing a hurricane some even a strong hurricane at least a category two or three. And then, as we get to next Saturday morning, you will see potentially some threats coming to the Virgin Islands, Puerto Rico and the northern leeward islands. Although several ensembles are already starting that recurve, which is what we like to see here, showing potentially some fish food here coming uh, for next Saturday. If you're in Bermuda, though, you do need to watch again as you've been a magnet for storms lately. And this one certainly could still be drawn in your direction here in Bermuda, which is right about here. So as we take a look beyond towards September 11th, overall, we see a bend away more to the northwest. Where that bend happens is still something I cannot accurately predict um, and we could see this change i've seen models all agree and then over time high pressure builds west and pushes things farther west of where the consensus is but what i do want to point out for you guys is that we have several solutions here showing pressures that are in the 940s and 950s which would be category three or even maybe category four and even one solution that shows a category five 913 millibar storm so I think there's a really good chance this will be a long tracked hurricane and a pretty decent chance it's a major hurricane. Really no changes from my forecast yesterday at this point. And then as we go on towards the 12th, we can see several of these stronger solutions are recurving the system, uh, but there are some that do not yet recurve it. So if you're in the Bahamas or on the Southeast coast, um, at this point, I'm not gonna scare you and say it's coming your way, but there are some solutions that still would make you uncomfortable and that you really just need to keep an eye on things at this point. Here's a look at the operational European, and you can see here likely Tropical Storm Lee by Thursday, and then likely a hurricane by next weekend, and it's close, close enough to the islands to cause some impacts at this point. And then we are seeing on September 11th and 12th, a turn more to the north and west, so you do need to watch things in Bermuda, and that pressure is dropping pretty significantly as well. Uh, the Canadian model says tropical storm as well here on Thursday and Friday, uh, beginning that bend a little bit farther north and east of the islands, far enough to not be an immediate threat, but something that could impact you here next weekend, and likely a hurricane, which the European or the European is stronger than the Canadian, but still a hurricane uh, moving west northwest, where we do need to keep an eye on things here in the Southwest Atlantic. Oh, by the way. Here's our next system the Canadian takes up well to the east as this high pressure region starts shifting east. This would go east of Bermuda and follow Katia. This would be Margo and Nigel could be in the offing here for the 11th or 12th. But again, that's really far out in the future. And then the GFS model, which runs farther out than the others. This one is farther south, and I feel like it's probably too far south. I don't see it coming through. Um, the southern leeward islands and hitting Puerto Rico like the GFS is showing. This is the zero Z run, which takes a system very close to the eastern seaboard. Yeah, that's a possibility, but it's it's less likely than what the other models I think are showing. Uh, here's a look at the newer GFS. This one is trending a little more to the right, which I like, but does have it hitting the leeward islands as a category two storm. 
going through the Virgin Islands, maybe as a category three, and then strengthening to a category three, and then slowly weakening, but you can see it is making that right turn between uh, North Carolina and Bermuda. This is kind of that Franklin path here by the end of next week, around the 15th. So we'll keep an eye on it. Obviously, the GFS is more of a threat to the East Coast than any of the other models, uh, but it is way too soon at this point to make a forecast. Just know we're watching. I think we're dealing with a long track system. We may have a hurricane that's a major, uh, which would be the third one of the season. And then after that, there's really too much uncertainty. By the way, here's Gert still trying to hang around next weekend, kind of getting squeezed in between what should be Lee and what should be um, Margo at this point, which the GFS says is an Eastern Atlantic hurricane, not a Central Atlantic hurricane. So Gert just wants to get into everybody's business over here, but she's not looking super healthy at this point. I don't even know if she'll be tropical, uh, but yeah, here we go. So this is the 14th. And we likely have Hurricane Lee, potentially Hurricane Margo, and maybe a remnant circulation that could still be Gert, believe it or not, a week later. <laughs> so very interesting stuff here, but a lot to talk about in the tropics. In the Western Pacific, Hong Kong got hit very hard by Sayola, Sayola, I think it is actually, and that is weakening quickly to a tropical storm and will be a remnant low going towards Hainan. Uh, another threat, though, is our next uh, typhoon, and this is Typhoon Haikui or Hannah, which is the Philippine name. It is strengthened now to a category two, 100 mile per hour storm and predicted to become a very strong typhoon as it moves ashore Taiwan here uh, tomorrow evening. Um, right now in Taiwan, it's already Saturday night. This would be Sunday night. So in about 24 hours or less, we do have a strong typhoon likely to move across um, Taiwan and then weaken as it heads into central China after that and another system which will be weak heading towards southern Japan and maybe something to keep an eye on after that. Here's a look at Seola, still a good circulation, tons of rain coming. Hong Kong is starting to see some relaxing in the wind, but a very rough night last night in Hong Kong. I did see a video of a young lady who got picked up by the wind and blown down the road. So I have no idea why people are even outside, but a very dangerous system here. One of the strongest to hit Hong Kong and Macau in recent history, but fortunately it'll weaken and, uh, and um, go back over water, but weaken into a depression. Here's Haikui. This one is greater concern. Um, some wind shear on the western side, but you can see the thunderstorms are growing with it. Here's Taiwan. Let me pull up my map real quick. Um, and if you are in Taiwan, obviously you guys are on my mind here. You've been, you've been missed a lot. You've had a lot of scares, but no real actual hits. But now we have a storm that looks like it's imminently going to hit central Taiwan and cross the central part of the island here with Hurricane or I should say typhoon conditions here in about 12 to 24 hours, and then weakening as it moves towards China after that and produces yet another flood. So I do appreciate y'all's time today. I hope you have a great weekend. I'm taking tomorrow off. I'm probably gonna take Labor Day off as well. Not a lot's gonna change between now and then, um, but please uh, be safe out there if you're traveling. Um, and we are gonna chat again here early next week. I thank you for your support. Um, if you could subscribe and you're a new viewer, I would very much appreciate that. If you're a returning viewer, um, I would like for you to, if you would, if you feel led to become a supporter at $9.99 a month, that will allow you to have uh, private videos. Uh, I will be responding to you um, more quickly, giving you more detail as a meteorologist, trying to help you out a little bit better. Cause I know there's a lot of comments coming through right now and I just don't have a chance to respond to all of them. Uh, especially the ones that aren't exactly helpful to the community. And that's all I'm really going to say about that. But I thank you for your support. Um, it really means the world to me. We got over 10,000 subscribers last week, and that's 10,000 people that are being informed on the weather and all possibilities. Um, I can see this channel getting easily to 20,000 at the end of the year. That's my goal. Um, but I, I want to thank you. But most importantly, I want to give all the glory to God who has called me to do this, called me to be a meteorologist and share my gift with you all. And um, one verse that's really impactful to me as a Christian is Romans 12, 2. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. I'm just going to make one statement about not being conformed. Um, I've always been a person that's been against the grain. Um, I feel when I do these videos that, yeah, you could certainly say that it's hype that I'm talking about things that haven't formed yet and that things will change. 
Um, but I do know that if I were to conform and do what everybody else is doing, every other meteorologist is saying, then in my opinion, I'm not doing enough of a service to really add value to forecasting. Um, in my opinion, if I do what everybody else is doing, there's nothing that makes me unique and God breathed. But I will say that conforming to the world, on the other hand, is practicing the customs of everyone else and turning away from God when God wants us to repent and turn to him because what's acceptable to God is not what's acceptable to the world. Being a Christian is not necessary. It's, it's frowned upon by the world. There's other religious beliefs out there, and, and I want to let you all know I'm not um, certainly against any of them. Um, I just know what's right for me as somebody who accepted Christ 10 years ago. But what I will say is um, following the rules of the world and following God's law versus following God's laws is the greatest struggle that a Christian will uh, go through the rest of their lives. But following God and knowing that God is perfect and that we're not allows us to accept Jesus Christ and to live eternally with him in heaven. And that's the roundabout way of saying I could do what everybody else is doing, but what good is that going to be eternally? There's no eternal future in doing what everybody in the world is doing. However, repenting and turning to God and accepting that Jesus died on the cross for our sins so that we could have new life and eternal life is a big transformation and a huge step and one that will allow us to be transformed and renewed. And then we don't have to prove ourselves anymore. We don't have to do it all ourselves. We let God do it all for us. And that is great news. And I just wanted to share that with you this, this morning uh, because it means the world to me. I hope you all have a great day and a great weekend. Enjoy your Labor Day if you can. And we'll chat again next week. God bless you.